Good morning, everybody. This is Jake. How are you this morning? It's August 22nd, 2017. It's a very nice day. It's the feast day of Our Lady, the Queenship of Our Lady, Our Lady Queen of Heaven and Earth. Uh, I just have a little issue here with the internet today, but anyway, uh, let's get right to this. Where are we? Okay, trying to open up my... Uh, my uh, stuff here. Uh, I just want to acknowledge, you know, I, I feel uh, grateful for everybody who's been sending me plenty of encouragement uh, with this thing that we're doing. Uh, early this morning, I got, a, um, I got a message. We're being watched all over the world. And uh, it's just phenomenal how uh, Facebook... Um, you know, really broadcasts uh, all over the world. So anyway, early this morning, I got a message. Um, I, I just wouldn't mention any more names and things like that. But anyway, I was, the message said, thank you very much for, uh, for what you're doing. Um, I watch you every day now. And then uh, it says, I have a friend who watched your, your video on forgiveness. And she watched it over and over and over again. And she found it very helpful. So she's wanting to ask if she could uh, send you a friend request and etc. So I said, yeah, go ahead, of course. Um, you know, uh, I just want to make it clear, folks. Uh, we are just instruments of God doing this. And I, I would like to repeat, I, I, the initial intention here is I teach my kids. I'm doing this for my kids. And we just thought we'd share it with the world. If uh, you find it helpful, then, uh, and then so be it, right? But uh, I am just an instrument. We are just instruments in trying to propagate uh, the faith. It is actually God who is working miracles in our souls. Okay? So the, 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 um, whatever change uh, you see in yourselves and whatever good you, you uh, might get out of this is really the work of grace. The work of God's grace acting on our souls. So... Uh, anyway, let's go right ahead. You know, uh, sometimes I get carried away and I, <laughs> I talk a lot. You got to forgive me for that. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll try and uh, make, it, um, make this commentary as short as possible. It's, it's a nice, exciting day. It's the queenship of Our Lady. Uh, August 27th is, um, is the queenship of Our Lady. Huh? 22nd. 22nd. What did I say? Oh, sorry. 22nd. Okay. Oh, it's also the wedding anniversary, by the way, of uh, my favorite uncle, Sonny, Uncle Sonny, and uh, and uh, Tita Normi. It's their uh, wedding anniversary today. Happy anniversary. Okay, but anyway, let me uh, let me read the gospel. Hey, are you done? Okay, let's read the gospel. Uh, where is it? From Matthew. It's actually a continuation of the gospel yesterday. But okay, and since we already commented about the gospel yesterday. Uh, I will shift my commentary today to Our Lady, Queenship of Our Lady. So Jesus said to His disciples, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. When His disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men it is impossible, but for God all things are possible. Then Peter said to him in reply, We have given up everything and followed you. What will there be for us? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, that you who have followed me in the new age, when the Son of Man is seated on his throne of glory, will yourselves sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel and everyone who has given up houses or brothers and sisters or father or mother or children or lands for the sake of my name will receive a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last will be first in this gospel our Lord talks about the kingdom of God he mentions it several times right kingdom of heaven kingdom of God right and in fact, he even promises the apostles uh, 12 seats from which they were to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. And you know what? In this 
heavenly kingdom, there is a queen. There is a queen. And that queen is Our Lady. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. When, when Jesus was promising this, Judas has not betrayed him yet. Okay, but he was replaced too. Uh -uh, you're distracting me. He was replaced too. Remember? By Matthias. So there's still 12 of them. Okay, anyway, but good point, Joe. Good point. Good point. Let's continue with the commentary. So in this kingdom, in this kingdom, there is a queen. And that queen is our lady, our blessed mother. The queenship of our lady was established as a feast by Pope Pius XII in 1954. Imagine, only in 1954. Well, that was the establishment of the feast okay, for August 22nd. But since time immemorial, our Catholic faith has always uh, believed in the, in the queenship, in the uh, glory of Our Lady that she enjoys in heaven. Right after the Assumption, okay, we are celebrating this feast six days, right? After the Assumption, Our Lady was taken up into heaven, body and soul. It is just logical to think, it is just logical to think that, uh, well, soon after the Assumption, she was crowned Queen of Heaven and Earth, a very fitting honor that Our Lady uh, deserved. And, uh, and our, uh, our Lord uh, did not lose any time to, uh, to um, give her that honor that she uh, rightfully deserves. And where do we get that? Where do we get that idea that, uh, um, that Our Lady is Queen of Heaven and Earth? Actually, there are several, uh, there are several things in uh, both from the Old Testament to the New Testament that prefigured uh, that whole image of Our Lady as Queen. Eh? And uh, perhaps one of the one of the most uh, dramatic things would be uh, uh, right from the Annunciation, right from the Annunciation when the angel Gabriel told Our Lady, um, "What is that? Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son." And you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. See? He comes from the line of David. David was king of Israel. See? So the imagery that you know he is gonna get, he's gonna inherit that throne. Jesus is king. Right? And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Now, if Jesus is king, that makes Mary, his mother, the queen mother. Right? That makes Mary the queen mother. And that is why very clearly, right from the very beginning of Our Lady's um, um, role in creation, being the mother of God, her motherhood and her queenship have already been established. See? Right from the very beginning, the relationship between Mary being mother, and not only just any mother, but the mother of the king, the one who will inherit the throne of David, was already very clearly established. See? That was going to be her role. And then, you know, uh, of course, and our, our Lord got born, and the uh, Lord lived His life, and our Lord died and suffered for us, right? But what, what was a, 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 a beautiful event that happened while Jesus was hanging on the cross? And Our Lady and St. John were right there at the foot of the cross. What did Our Lord Jesus Christ do? To John and Mary, huh? Hey, right? He told Our Lady, eh? Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. Right? Our Lord gave Our Lady to us to be our mother. We were all represented in the person of St. John. Eh? St. John stood there as a representative of the entire human race. Okay? Eh? Our mother was given to us. The same mother of Jesus Christ, the same queen, see, was given to us to be our own mother, our own queen, the queen of the entire church. Okay? 
And that is why St. John from that time on took Mary into his own home and took care of Our Lady. And when Our Lady, of course, ascend, uh, assume, was assumed into heaven, okay, uh, um, uh, anyway, after, uh, many years later, <laughs> when St. John wrote the Revelation, the book of Revelation, he had this vision. And let us read it. He had his vision. A great portent appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with a moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. This, and then it continues from there, right? This vision of St. John is clearly in reference to the Blessed Virgin. Okay? Our Lady, who he took good care of after our Lord died. Okay? St. John was very intimate, very close with, to Our Lady. And uh, he was granted that vision to understand that she was indeed queen of heaven and earth. And, you know, uh, uh, Our Lady herself has revealed herself to be queen. And I was trying to look uh, all over the place for my sources about uh, well, wh where did Our Lady herself reveal that she was queen, right? And interestingly, huh? Uh, yeah, well, no, not not quite. But anyway, I found something very interesting, and it's right here in the United States. And apparently, Our Lady appeared to a Belgian immigrant uh, by the name of Adele. Adele Brice or Adele Brice, uh, depends on how you pronounce Anyway, to Adele. Who's Adele? You know Adele? Hello? Hello. <laughs> the singer? She's got the same name, okay? And it's interesting how apparently she appeared to this uh, immigrant woman where she revealed herself to be queen. Okay? To be the queen. Anyway, we will read here. December 9, 2010. Um, this is from EWTN News. With approval from Bishop David Ricken of Green Bay, Wisconsin, a chapel with, in the town of Champion is now the first approved Marian apparition site in the United States. On December 8, 2010, the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, the bishop decreed with moral certainty that the Virgin Mary had indeed appeared to a young Belgian immigrant woman, Adele Briss, on three occasions in October of 1859. That far back, 1859. Since 1861, the site of those apparitions has been home to a chapel dedicated to the Virgin Mary under the title, Our Lady of Good Help. Our Lady of Good Help. It's like Our Lady of Perpetual Help, right? In the Philippines, it's big devotion, Our Lady of Perpetual Help. Anyway, following a two-year investigation of the alleged apparitions, Bishop Ricken proclaimed them worthy of belief. Okay. And confirmed his diocese's official recognition of the popular shrine. Okay, now listen here. During each of these three apparitions, our a lady in shining white clothes appeared to Adele. The third time, she identified herself as the Queen of Heaven who prays for the conversion of sinners. Very clearly. The Queen of Heaven who prays for the conversion of sinners. So she is a different kind of queen, right? She's not the kind of queen who is just all puffed up with her authority and, you know, uh, like, the, like the queen mothers that you would watch with your uh, Disney princess movies and stuff like that. <laughs> we have a queen who is really a mother. We have a queen who is a compassionate mother, who is a merciful mother. So it's a good, nice combination, right? Of she calls, She's called Our Lady of Good Help, Our Lady of Perpetual Help, but who is at the same time a queen, regal, with authority, with influence. But what kind of influence? What kind of authority do you think would this queen mother have I'd like to imagine her I'd like to imagine our lady as precisely that same mother 
who told the servants at the wedding feast of Cana. Remember, they ran out of wine. Our lady was was thinking, what's going to happen here? It's going to be an embarrassment to this couple. Uh, and uh, Jesus was not yet ready to proclaim himself, right? He was not ready to do his, his uh, public life. But our lady approached the servants and told them, do whatever he tells you. Our lady must have approached Jesus and said, hey, they have no wine. And our Lord said, well, what do you want me to do? My time is not yet, I'm not ready. It's not yet my time. Our Lady must have just smiled at him and said, mm. then she went to the servants, do whatever he tells you. It's like, you know, like any mother who seems to know what their children are going to do, right? That their children could not refuse, could not refuse the, the simple requests of their mother. They wouldn't dare to refuse the simple requests that their mother make of them, right? So that was the kind of confidence Our Lady had. That's the kind of authority, so-called, that Our Lady had over her son, right? Uh, that she knows that her son, the king, is not going to refuse her any of her uh, requests. And that is the kind of confidence we can have uh, towards Our Lady. And today, this feast is a very good reminder for us that we have a queen mother in heaven who was given to us through St. John, right? given to us to be our own mother, to be our own queen who can always intercede for us before the throne of Jesus, the king, the king of the universe, the king of our hearts, the king of our lives. We are the subjects of this king, Jesus. And we too will be willing very willing subjects, so to speak, of this Queen Mother who we know is always looking after us, is always interceding for us, is always compassionate with us, is always merciful, and is always ready to help us. All we need to do is holler, <laughs> holler, right? Call on Our Lady, pray to Our Lady. Ask Our Lady for help. And just like any mother, she will always rush to the aid of her children. Okay? And let us remember, you know, there's a beautiful prayer that we pray every day, which reminds us of the queenship of Mary. Can you tell me what that prayer is? Very good, Mia. <laughs> Very good. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. See, it's right away connected there. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor vanished children of Eve. To thee do we set up our sighs, mourning, weeping in this valley of tears. Right? Turn thy most precious advocate, etc., 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 etc. Right? Part of the rosary. Exactly, part of the rosary. So the concluding prayer of the rosary is that, right? And thank you, Mia, for reminding us of that prayer where we, every day, Every day that we pray the rosary, we are reminded of the queenship of Our Lady. Hail, Holy Queen. So today, today, as a good Catholic practice, let us pray the rosary a lot better. With more attention, with more love, with more devotion. Especially when we come to that part where we are praying the Hail, Holy Queen. Okay? Okay, folks. Have a good day today. Be close to Our Lady. Remember to keep praying to her. And have a good day. See you next time. Bye-bye.